we will calculate the whole stock that you own. We, there is no way in an inventory we put that there is dead stock. Because like these chairs that you are sitting on, uh, I don't think if you turn behind it, you'll see that it has an expiry date. The manufacturer maybe manufactured it in 2009 and sold it when this church was opened. So uh, I really want to encourage you, if you are doing a business that you are sure that product will be sold one day, eliminate the attitude of saying it's a dead stock. You can only have a stale stock when you are dealing with perishables, like m what I do, bread. In bread business is where I can say I have a, a dead stock, because when the bread is stale, I cannot add it to my inventory. So for wood and something that does not expire, you just have to have a patient mind, and one day you'll have to sell. And also remember, when we'll be valuing you, we value you as per your stock, both the dead, the alive, and what you own. So just eliminate that attitude of saying, this is a dead stock, I'll never sell it. I can give you an example. I own another factory that does sweaters. There are some sweaters that I, I first made in 2003. When I was a very small guy, I didn't know anything about that business. Do you know that last month, there's a guy who came and I sold to him at 150 shillings per sweater. I don't know where he was taking them. But following the routes, I found him selling them at Langas at 200 shillings. And people were buying and using to kupunguza baridi kwa muliao. So to me, in that mindset, I could have thought maybe it's a dead stock in Izichome. But how many years have I been patient with those stock and have earned that money? So just eliminate that attitude. Any person who will come to value will value with all your stock. I think that is also good. Thank you. Maybe just to add on what my fellow panelists have said. If you have read business books, business encourages what we call diversification. You cannot just have one business, especially if, if I hear you rightly, that business is seasonal. Now you need another business which we call a cash flow business. Because when you diversify, there is what we call a cash flow business, just like you have heard, he has talked about bread. He has talked about sweaters. His business is well balanced. So for my friend, you need to look for another business, which is, which is a cash flow business, which can generate money on a daily basis, if possible. And then they usually say, research has shown that uh, people who are in business have got the capacity of running four businesses. I don't want to go into that. That one is, uh, we call it the mindset of the rich. We can talk about that later, but you have the capacity to run four businesses very, very well. Thank you. Wow, that question has been well elaborated. To a game of coffee. So, you uh, don't testing to a Janza session. Kuna so lingine? Anybody with a question? To the panelists, the early bird. Kuna mtu kuna so My name is Peter, and uh, my question is, we, especially in, the, in this era of youth, many a times, uh, or let me say the people have interacted with so, ma so much, they encourage young people to, to focus on having uh, different streams of income. Now, um, basing on my experience, given that I'm not so much into the academic sector, because of uh, some reasons. I, I wanted to pursue CPA as a professional course, but some, due to some financial issues, I couldn't. Now, how can you balance yourself in these uh, systems that you can be able to have uh, businesses that are running, and how can you first identify that if I go into these I'm going to do A, B, C, D in it because many a times we young people fear going into business because of the risk factor or the losing factor that is behind the business you're thinking to start. 
And then number two is, how can you identify locations? Because I'm sure in business, locations matters, especially these stationary businesses. Like uh, I, I had someone say they run uh, printing and such like businesses. So how do you identify those locations? And then how do you go into the market search? Because in business, I believe when you identify the market is when your business can grow. So how do you identify or how, which, which uh, methods do you use to identify your market so that you're going to it? Yes, who is feeling gracious enough to, to tackle that? Oh, Gideon is saying, bring it on. So, Gideon. Yes, uh, thank you so much for that question. First of all, we wish to, like, uh, like my panelists has, has, uh, has say that it is, it is possible to run more than two income streams, right? So, uh, first of all, you identify wh where are you, where are you, uh, where, where do you have strengths in whatever market you want to venture into? Because if you are in graphics, like you've said, you understand that digital marketing is not limited to like uh, beauty products alone. We can equally market the products like printing services and branding services. Like right now, for instance, I am branded. I am wearing a branded wear, whereby I am communicating a brand of someone else, which is not mine, but I'm proudly able to say this is what I did. So first of all, identify a niche that you want to be identified in. Identify based on the strengths that you have. If you are saying you've not gone to the academics where you are a teacher as a, or identified as a teacher, be identified as a pharmacist and do it excellently. People will be coming to you because of the service that you are offering out there, not because you are just any common pharmacist. As a graphic designer, I would say that your work is what sets you apart because we are so many in the field and clients will always look for something that makes them stand out in the crowd because essentially in our graphics field we are to make people or their businesses that we are serving to stand out in their respective formats. So if you are trying to venture into like the, 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 the social marketing, create a niche where your people will be coming to that site to check what you're offering. Not necessarily on the, the, the product, but the way you package is what matters in the, 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 the marketing field. So if you are to like, try to do uh, various businesses in the same field of marketing, uh, like now if you have to create social media posters and e-cards, you will be standing out as a graphics designer that specifically does posters for the various fields, like schools, like uh, other marketing uh, agencies, and things like that. So what you need to do is, first of all, identify your strength and venture into it. Do not fear on like, how you'll be received out there in the, in the market. Because be before you are known, you have to sell yourself out there. You have to come out strongly and sell your idea that you are in it and you are able to offer that client that is looking up, uh, up to you to, to like make them stand out in their respective fields. I think that's what I can talk to you about. Okay, just to add on that, uh, before you start a business, you should have an idea. And then after you have an idea, you have to develop a business plan. What do you want to do? After you develop your business plan, you now identify a market. And the market, does it have a need to your business? That will now push your location. It will push where you are supposed to be located. I think once you have that, you are good to go. Then, in business, any person who wants to become a businessman, you have to take an oath of taking a risk. 
you should be a risk taker. If you start a business with a mindset that I'm going to make a loss and I fall, it's you who has called that to you and it will happen. But if you have that mindset that I want to do this business and make profit and even engage in more ventures, that is what you've called into your business and it will happen to you. So just have a business plan, uh, identify the market, after you identify the market, that market will now push your location. You cannot set a pork business next to a mosque. You know what I'm saying. Thank you. Maybe just to, I see he wants to cut us short, but just to help you a little bit, or to add on what my panelists have said, Dana said a very important point of business plan and idea. You know, the question you have asked is very broad. For example, you have talked about how do you identify location. That one is identifying business opportunity. One way of identifying a business opportunity is finding where problems are. Money is in the problems you solve. So whenever you see a problem, don't look at it as a problem. It is a business opportunity. So where you are, if there are people having problems, for example, you discover that there is a certain product, people go for it very far. Why can't you bring it close to them and you, earn what we, you do what we call margin business? Because margin just means you're buying at a lower price and selling at a higher, higher price. So that is one way you can identify if there are problems in your location. Another way you can identify a, a business is your passion. What do you feel, what, what can you do without being paid? That one will help you also to identify which business you can do. And whichever business you, you choose, you have had. You must have a business, a business plan. We'll be digging into that as we move on. Thank you. That is a question. That is a small one as we conclude. Okay. Bwana Sifiwe. Bwana Yesu wa Sifiwe. Hebu tusalamiane hewani nione kama sisi wote tuko hapa. Asante sana. Tusilale. Uh, I've been asked in several locations that how do I manage to work with my best friend, my advisor, and my wife in the same business. Uh, it's very challenging and this is the first platform I'm saying this when we are together uh, it's not very easy to work with your spouse especially you are, if you are in a service industry but the best thing we do is we set boundaries when you are at home we are husband and wife the moment we step out of the gate we are business partners so, mambo yote ya biashara tunamalizia nje ya gate. She calls me boss, I call her madam. And that's how even our employees refer to us. The moment we step into your house, I call her my wife, she calls me my sweetheart. Bwana sifiwe. Amen. Another thing, uh, she, she is supposed to understand what I do. And uh, I've trained my wife in everything that I do. She knows all my suppliers. She knows how I pay my workers. She knows my relationship with all my employees. And I've trained my employees to respect her the more, as much as they respect me. So that has made it easier for us to, to work together. Another thing uh, you might ask, don't, do you people quarrel? And do you people maybe have disagreement? Yes, we do have. And those disagreements, especially in business, end up generating revenue. Like, for example, if she supplies something somewhere and is not paid in good time, we have to quarrel for her to get that money. And once she gets that money, 
I pat her back and say congratulations. When we reach at home, I hide a flower behind my back and say, sweetheart, welcome home. And that is finished there. So it's very easy to work with her. Number two, the most trusted person I trust in my business is my wife. Because she's the, the person who knows where I sleep, where I wake up, how I wake up, how I eat, and do everything. So it's the best person I can really work with. That is why I pulled her from where she was working. She was an administrator at Eldoret Hospital. I made her resign there to come and help me manage my business. So that's how we work. Thank wow, you. Thank you. So, boss, uh, uh, madam, madam, madam. Swalini ya madam. So, boss, akikuja aseme ya meona Mercedes na antaka kuchukua pesa ya stock. Unakatazanga aje. Unamukataza aje. <laughs> Nani boss. <laughs> okay. In our business, to Mejifunza, we have a, what we call financial discipline. We, have, we also pay ourselves salary. At the end of the month, after everything has been done, I, he, he pays me salary, he pays himself salary. So from this, our salary is what you can plan for. Other things apart from business, not the money in business. Okay. Yeah, so kama kuna Mercedes inafaa kununuliwa na pesa ya hiyo ya salary ni sawa we can buy but not money business <laughs> So kwa kifupi umenyimwa pesa <laughs> Wow it's been a, a good session uh, Is our supper ready No we can have another one question as we wait for Oh ni dinner Nimeambiwa supper ni watu maskini dinner ni ya Dina ni watu kama sisi. <laughs> Question? Mredi uja uliza suwali? Oh. Kuna mtu wakona suwali? Oh, kuna suwali ingine. Uh, to the boss. Mimi pia ni boss kwa angu. Lakini niko na challenge. We've been doing this, uh, this business for the last, uh, from 2017 to date. Uh, my wife doesn't know how to go procure timber from outside. Every time I get this question, when I leave her in the yard to go out, she'll always call me, Imbao <laughs> inauzwa pesangapi. In that scenario, what do you do? Uh, thank you, my fellow boss. What I did to this beautiful lady seated next to me, when I called her to work with her, she went back to class, my classroom. I had to teach her from the roots of the business. And luckily, she's also a graduate in business administration, so it was easy. I taught her everything that entails what I do. Because uh, before COVID, I used to travel so much outside the country. I could go to China and uh, India, Pakistan, Indonesia. Sometimes I could stay there for even two months or even six weeks. Now you can imagine who can run that business with the employee of uh, around 100 and above. So, mimi nilikuwa naangalia future. I called her, sat her down, and I have explained to her everything that entails to business. Yeye hata anajua kushona. Anajua kushona, aneza kakuambia one kilo of uh, raw material can give you how many units of product, of a product. So, once you decide you want to work with your spouse, make sure you teach her everything that entails your business. Because uh, we are human beings. And it's obvious that all of us sometimes can fall sick or we can become incapacitated in some point. Now, will you trust your managers to run your business? It becomes risky for a business person. So if you are a serious business person, 
make sure you engage your spouse and teach her, take her to class. Muambie, hii mbao inakuanga hivi, hii inakuanga hivi. And me, I used to threaten her and tell her that I'm teaching you this because next week I'm going to Dubai for two months. And, my, and at, at, at that time, we used to not to have WhatsApp. We were just communicating through email and uh, Facebook Messenger. So they used to catch up very fast together with the manager at that time. Na hawakuwa na option. And the other time I was checking my emails, nilikuwa naona sometimes there's some machine that broke down, walikuwa na struggle, wanaenda baka wanaita mtuwa picha, awapigie, ndi waenda wa scan, wanitumie kwa email, ni wapate instruction. But uh, that one taught her so much. So make sure your spouse aelewe yo biashara, because in the eventuality that you are not around, she can easily run it, and she can do it with passion, because wewe ndi umemukaribisha. I think that is that. Well, thank you. So maybe this question goes to Gideon. Eh? Gideon, mtu anauliza hako na kazi ya naingia saa moja, na natokanga saa kuminambili. Kuna venya aneza kuwa na side hustle kweli? Jai, inaweze kana? Mujotu kisami inaweze kana, tunafanya. Inaweze kana ukuwa na side hustle, kama ukuwa employed? It is very possible. Because if you are looking at having an extra stream of income, nothing will make you run away from it. Because everything that you desire to, to achieve in this life requires sacrifices. So you can decide to, to have an extra stream of income, which is a passive income. There are currently so many online <coughs> opportunities that can really substitute even the current job that you go from 7 to, is it 6 to 7 p.m.? Yes. So it's very possible. It depends on your identification of that opportunity, if it is there. And if you don't think that there are opportunities, it is good to reach out to people that are vast, like in these on online businesses. There are very uh, many opportunities, and it is possible. Wow, well, thank you. So uh, our food is ready, and uh, we want to take the most minimum time. Uh, we serve and then we get back to our tables and then we shall continue with the questions and uh, our panelists are here to answer us. I think we now have quorum. We shall start officially. We shall give them time to be able to explain what they do, how they began and where they are at and then we can proceed. Eh? So um, who will pray for our food?